All right, guys, we're going to go over today's math muscles. Forgive my little impromptu overhead camera here, trying to use my phone and be far enough away so you can still see what I'm doing without the phone shaking the whole time. So bear with me and we're going to get through this. I don't have my projector here at home, obviously, so we're just making up one as we go. But number one says, which of the following are not parallelograms? Well, if you remember when we did our hierarchy way back in August, we had non-parallelograms and we had parallelograms. In order to be a non-parallelogram, it only has zero or one set of parallel sides that are opposite each other. If it's a parallelogram, it has two sets of parallel sides opposite each other. So when I go through my list here, I do see the word not. So not means I am looking for shapes that are not going to have two sets of parallel lines opposite each other. So when I go through my figures here, I can even draw a picture just to remind myself what a square looks like. When I have a square, of course you guys know I'm not an artist, so this is the best I can come up with here. I have a set here, and they're opposite each other, and I have a set here, and those are opposite each other. Again, so A, it cannot be a square because a square is a parallelogram because it has two sets of opposite sides that are parallel. When I look at a kite, and if I draw a kite here, if I extend these lines out, guess what? They cross. So those are adjacent lines, and those are going to intersect each other when I continue them on. So they have zero sets of parallel lines opposite one another, so that would be a non-parallelogram. So I'm gonna circle B. A kite is a non-parallelogram. When I look at a rhombus, if I remember in my hierarchy when I'm going down my parallelograms, I do find a rhombus because a rhombus can be a square, but a square cannot be a rhombus because in a rhombus, all four sides are equal but I do not have four right angles. I know my picture is not very good there. But again, I do have those lines that if I extend them out, I have two sets of parallel lines that are opposite one another. So it can't be C, it cannot be a rhombus. When I do a trapezoid, I can draw trapezoids a couple of different ways. There's an example. There's an example. And when I extend those lines out, there's one set. But if I extend these out, they're going to eventually intersect. So that cannot be a parallelogram. And same here with this one. If I extend these lines out, they will never cross. But again, if I extend these out, eventually they're going to intersect. So a trapezoid is not a parallelogram. Okay, when I know about a rectangle. Okay, I know I've got two sets of lines here that are opposite each other, and they are never going to intersect if I extend them out. So a rectangle is a parallelogram. When I have a triangle, a triangle isn't even in our hierarchy when it comes to quadrilaterals, and a parallelogram is a quadrilateral, so that automatically takes the triangle out because it only has three sides, and all of their lines, if we were to extend them out, would intersect, number one, but number two, they don't have opposite sides that would continue on forever. So a triangle is not a quadrilateral, therefore it is not a parallelogram. All right, let's move on to number two. On number two, it says, Miss Torsak ran three and one-tenth kilometers. How many meters did she run? Okay, well, if I notice, I'm going from kilometers to meters. Those are not in the same unit of measure, so I'm gonna have to convert. We know that in fifth grade, we horse to fly. What do we do? We multiply. So I'm gonna just list out our little King Henry died <clears throat> using dirty chocolate milk. Okay, I know there's different ways you can look at that. Kangaroos have dirty underwear during cold months. There's lots of different ways you can do that. We know the unit is a liter, a meter, and a gram. So I'm going from here to here. So I have to look and see how many jumps am I going to make. I'm going to go one, two, three. So I'm going to take my three and one tenth and I'm going to make one, two, three moves. I'm going to fill in those blank places with zero. So three and one tenth kilometers is the same as 3,100 meters. Okay, and we can also, if you think about with our 
metric system, we're multiplying by powers of 10. Here's one move, two moves, three moves. So that's the same thing as doing three and one tenth times 10 to the third power, which would again give me one, two, three moves, fill in my spaces with zeros, and I still have 3,100. Number three, which of the following could measure volume? Select all. Remember, select all most of the time means there's going to be more than one answer. Not always, but most of the time. So let's remember what we know about volume. Volume has to have how many measurements? Three measurements. Okay, and we use those terms. If we have a one unit cube from last week, if you remember on our math muscles, one unit cubed is one times one times one. That's the measurement of one unit cube. Okay, so in order to look for my ones that have volume, I'm looking for words that have cubed. I'm looking for words that have cubic. I'm looking for the little three because I have three measurements with volume. So let's go through these. A, I see the three exponent. So I know that that means I have three measurements. Therefore, I have volume. Okay, over here though, I have two, and we know that two measurements is area. That's only length times width, so B is out. Okay, here again, I see that word cubic. Okay, if you remember from last week, we talked about different ways that we can measure. We've got centimeters cubed, cubic. Okay, so we can choose C. On D, I see the word cubed again, so I'm going to circle D. Feet has nothing, so that's only length or the width of something, it's not, it's just one measurement, so it cannot be E. And again, I see my little two here, which indicates squared, which means I only have two measurements. So again, that would be area, not volume. So you have A, C, and D. All right, when we're comparing using greater than, less than, or equal to, I have to solve both sides before I can put my symbol in there. So if I'm multiplying by 10 to the second power, I know that that means that that's two zeros, okay, that's multiplying it by 100, or I'm making two moves. When I multiply by a power of 10, I'm moving my decimal point to the right. So I'm going to make two hops, one, two to the right, and now I have 17 and five hundredths. When I'm dividing, I'm going to move my decimal left. When I see the zero as an exponent here, it means zero moves. So I'm only dividing by 10 or by zero, because I have zero, I said that wrong, sorry. I have zero zeros in my number, so I only have, I'm dividing by one, okay? So when I take those zeros out, 10 to the zero power equals one whole, because I have zero zeros with my one here. So if I'm dividing or multiplying anything by one, my answer remains the same, so I'm not going to, I'm gonna make zero moves, so I'm still gonna have 17 and 5 hundredths, and therefore, these two are equal. All right, last one, number five, Mrs. Gray, because we know she loves Kit Kats, she found Kit Kats on sale for $1.79 per package. She wanted to stock up, so she bought eight packages, so I know I've got, they're $1.79 each per package, She's buying eight and I need to know the total. So two things here, I could use repeated addition and add $1.79 eight times, but I wanna be quick and I wanna be efficient and I wanna be accurate. So in fifth grade, we've worked on being efficient, which means quick and accurate. So I'm gonna multiply. So I'm gonna write out one and 79 hundredths times eight. Okay, I know that nine times eight is 72. I'm gonna put my two, regroup my seven. Eight times seven is 56. 56 plus 7 is 63. And then I have 8 times 1 is 8. 8 plus 6 is 14. Okay, and you know, we treat these like whole numbers when we're multiplying. So you could, if you wanted to move it out, but now we've got to push it back in. I have two numbers behind the decimal point. I moved it out two places, so I've got to move it back in two places. And she spent $14.32. <clears throat> All right, guys, see you tomorrow.